talk about perspective today. I think perspective is a lens in which we see everything from, and it makes a huge difference. Let me give you an example. When I'm coming in on a plane to LAX, coming back from a trip, I always look up and down the 405 freeway because that's the freeway I need to take home. And what's nice about that perspective is I can see miles up and down the 405. And let's just say I see a little bit of a fender bender about a mile up from Century. Not bad, but I also see the tow truck just taking the disabled car off the freeway. Well, I know this, that by the time I land, get my luggage, get in the car, that thing's going to be cleared, no problem, I'm on my way. It's a different perspective from the guy on the ground just getting on the freeway. All he sees is a whole bunch of cars, a sea of cars. He has no idea if he's going to go anywhere. He's frustrated. He's bummed. He's honking his horn. John chapter 11, the famous chapter where Jesus raises Lazarus, gives us an eternal perspective, a divine perspective. And that's what I'd like to get into today. Let me give you a bit of an overview. I know it's very well known. Jesus raising Lazarus. Well, Lazarus has two sisters, Mary and Martha, older sisters. And this family is very close to Jesus. Jesus does business at their house. They love Jesus. Jesus loves them. Well, their little brother Lazarus gets sick. So Mary and Martha send a messenger over to the next town and say, Lord, the one you love is sick. Please come heal him. Now, mind you, Mary, Martha, and Lazarus know Jesus is the Messiah. He's God. He can heal. And they believe it with every fiber in their body. So they, they send for help. Well, Jesus does something odd. He waits. He doesn't come riding in on a white horse and heal him right away. In fact, he waits a few days. In fact, Lazarus dies. And Jesus ultimately raises Lazarus. But the interplay between the sisters and Jesus tells us so much about how the Lord responds to us, about what Christ would have our perspective be. So I'd like to read a little bit and we'll get into it. I'm going to start in John chapter 11. I'm going to read verses 1 through 6. It says this, Now a man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany, the village of Mary and her sister Martha. This Mary, whose brother Lazarus now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, the one you love is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, this sickness will not end in death. No, it is for God's glory, so that God's son may be glorified through it. Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Yet when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was two more days. Well, that's curious. Why would he stay there two more days? Well, I can tell you what, the sisters wanted to know. Now let's fast forward. I'm going to read verse 32, and this gives us a bit of an insight. Verse 32 says this, When Mary reached the place where Jesus was and saw him, she fell at his feet and said, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. It's sort of an indictment. She's kind of bummed. Lord, if you had been here my brother would not have died. Now remember, Mary knows that Jesus loves her, loves Lazarus, loves her sister. She doesn't understand what's going on. I love you, Jesus. You love me. How on earth could you let something like this happen? She's blown away. Well, think about it like this. I think all of us as believers have had our Mary and Martha moments, haven't we? What about when one of our loved one dies? What about maybe our marriage dissolves or our parents get a divorce or our father becomes an alcoholic or a child becomes a drug addict or we get cheated out of promotion at work? Many, many things. Those are the why, Lord, moments. Wait, I thought we had a relationship here, Lord. How could this happen to me? Let me keep reading. Verse 33 tells us why. And I think this is the most powerful verse in the chapter. Verse 33 says this, When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her also weeping, he was deeply moved in spirit and troubled. This word deeply moved in the Greek, you could do a study on it. 
it has a picture, a connotation of the strong war horse snorting or sort of an involuntary gasp. One commentator says that it aptly describes Jesus trembling. There's so much emotion. What it is is the Lord sees the pain in these people he loves and it causes this emotion in him. Now know this, he knew dang good and well he was about to raise Lazarus. So it wasn't because Lazarus was dead, Lazarus was coming back to life. But he cared about these people and they're hurting so much. Let me say this, the Lord never gets used to our hurting. He never says, oh, well, they're hurting, no big deal. He never gets used to our hurting. I think an apt analogy is a mother and her infant child, a one and a half year old child, taking that dear child to the doctor for some sort of a vaccine or inoculation. I don't think there's any stronger love than between a mother and a child. And when the doctor jabs this needle in this little infant, and this infant looks at its mommy like, how can you be letting this happen? I trust you, I love you. The mom might even tear up, but the mom knows it is for that baby's best. And I think there's an apt analogy for us there. Jesus teaches us through his delays, but he sorrows with us at the same time. He delays for our development. He wants us certainly to pour our hearts out to him, but he'll enter into the pain with us when we do so. God is all knowing, God is all powerful, God is in control. His delays are delays of love. Let me repeat that. His delays are delays of love. We can choose our perspective, so to speak. We can mess around here in the traffic jam or believe scripture and know that help is on the way. Let me read you a verse from Revelation about the Lord, and this sums it up. It's Revelation 21.4. It says this, He will wipe every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death or mourning or crying or pain, for the old order of things has passed away. And that is so true, friends. The Lord will wipe every tear from our eye. Let me ask you today, where's your perspective? Where's it at? Are you down here in the traffic jam of life, so to speak, honking, standing on the bumper? When's this thing going to end? I'm in pain here, Lord. What's going on? What's the answer? Or is it from Christ's vantage point, seated in the heavenlies at the right hand of God, looking down on us, caring and loving us? I love you guys, and I'll see you next week. Blessings.